Hi my friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Legacy Stacker. If you watch my channel, you know that I have a couple of coin collections and I review a one year series on a weekly basis. If you'd like to view my Morgan Silver Dollar Collection playlist, I'll leave a link right up here so you can check it out. You may have also seen my American Silver Eagle Proof Collection on my channel as well. Today, I'm going to review my latest collection, my Presidential Dollars Collection, in this first Dansko album, Part 1. Coins are related to history based on the date of the coin. Coins are also related to finance since they are real money. So come for the coins and stay for the history and finance. But first, to the computer. Now, here at the SD Bullion website, today is Monday, June 24th, 2024. The silver spot price is $29.72. The gold spot price is $2,332, which gives us a gold to silver ratio of 78 to 1. Hi, my friends. As you can tell, I've made a decision to keep my identity anonymous on this channel for security reasons. Please feel free to participate in my Million Subscribers Challenge by clicking on the subscribe button below. Do you really want to know who I am? If so, please click on the subscribe button below and when I reach 1 million subscribers, I will move from behind the camera to in front of the camera. That's my challenge to you. Subscribing to my channel won't cost a thing and most of all, thank you. Here's the disclaimer. So I wanted to share with you these beautiful Presidential Dollars Dansko albums I purchased recently. And although all of these coins are clad, it contains all of the Presidential Dollars in two Dansko albums from the Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco Mints. I love this album format because I can put this album on a bookshelf and then I can bring it out whenever I want to look at the coins. Here's an image of the Dansko albums currently on my bookshelf. And today we're going to cover this first album which contains the presidential dollars which were minted beginning in 2007 up until 2011. The presidential dollars have been minted in the order by the years the president was in office. On the front flap of the album it provides the history of the presidential dollars. The album also contains fast facts about each of the presidents and photos of each of them. This Dansko album is a wealth of knowledge about the presidency and the historical presidents of the United States. So, this video may be a little longer than usual. The album begins with the presidential dollars, includes the years they were president, and the San Francisco Mint dollars are of the proof type. I believe this album can also be an invaluable learning tool to help people, or students even, learn about the presidents of the United States, which should be part of every school curriculum. First, we have George Washington. You may know that George Washington, our first president, was a war hero from the Revolutionary War. But did you know that he was president of the Constitutional Convention that drafted the Constitution and he rejected a movement to make him king of the United States? And of course, his portrait is on the Washington Quarter. John Adams helped draft the Declaration of Independence and he was the great-great-grandson of the Pilgrims who landed at Plymouth Rock in 1620. He was an advocate for the independence from Great Britain and wrote about it in the Boston Gazette. And he later wrote the Constitution for the state of Massachusetts. John Adams lived until the age of 90 and saw his son, John Quincy Adams, become president. More on him in a little bit. Thomas Jefferson was the principal author of the Declaration of Independence. He graduated from the College of William and Mary, studying law, and his private library became the start of the Library of Congress today, which is the largest library in the world. He had red hair and he organized the Lewis and Clark expedition that led to the acquisition of the territory west of the Mississippi River, known as the Louisiana Purchase. And of course, his portrait is on the Jefferson Nickel. James Madison grew up on his family's plantation, Montpelier. He graduated from the College of New Jersey, what is now called Princeton University. He helped write the State Constitution of Virginia. He also authored the Bill of Rights to the Constitution, 
and started the War of 1812, where British troops burned down the Executive Mansion. When the Executive Mansion was restored, it was painted white, giving it the name it's known by today, the White House, where the current president resides. Now that we've turned to page two, we have the following presidents. James Monroe graduated from the College of William and Mary and fought in the Revolutionary War in 1776. He adopted the policy for setting aside land for Native Americans in the Great Plains. He signed into law the Missouri Compromise and Florida was obtained from Spain during his presidency. Through the Monroe Doctrine, he established that no further colonization of the Americas would be by Europeans. John Quincy Adams graduated from Harvard University and studied law. He opposed slavery and defended freedom of speech. He swam daily in the Potomac River and kept an alligator in the East Room of the White House. He also negotiated the Treaty of Ghent, which ended the War of 1812. Andrew Jackson was referred to as Old Hickory and was the only president to pay off the national debt. That's major, especially if you compare that to the nearly $35 trillion in debt we have today. He graduated from Harvard University and spoke eight different languages and fought in the Revolutionary War. He was also appointed the first governor of Florida and held grand parties at the White House, which were open to the public at that time in history. Martin Van Buren was the first president to be born in the United States. He easily obtained the presidential nomination with the previous president, President Jackson's support. His presidency was overshadowed, however, by the Panic of 1837, the first U.S. economic depression. Congress accepted his recommendation for an independent treasury system, and he headed a faction of his party, which later became the Democratic Party. He also limited the workday for the first time to 10 hours a day on federal public works projects. The third page of the album contains the following presidents. William Henry Harrison was the first president to pass away while in office. He was a signer of the Declaration of Independence and was the only president to study in the medical field before enlisting to fight in the Indian Wars. He was promoted to commander of Fort Washington in Ohio and became the first governor of the great landmass, including Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, parts of Michigan, and Minnesota. He got his nickname, Old Tippecanoe, from his victory over the Shawnee at the Battle of Tippecanoe. He passed away of pneumonia just 32 days after he was inaugurated. John Tyler, then vice president, took office after William Henry Harrison passed away in office. He graduated from the College of William and Mary, established the border between Maine and Canada, and opened trade between Asia and the United States. John Knox Polk was known as Old Hickory. At the young age of 17, he had gallstone surgery without anesthesia at that time. He went to the University of North Carolina and was the governor of Tennessee. To put things in context, he was nominated for president using Morse code by telegraph at the time. He was president during the Mexican-American War and the California Gold Rush. During his presidency, he acquired Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. He was also the first president to have his photograph taken. Zachary Taylor was also known as Old Rough and Ready for his informal dress. He served in the Army for 40 years and was a hero of the Mexican-American War for leading his outnumbered troops to victory over Mexican President Santa Anta at the Battle of Buena Vista. Interestingly enough, he did not vote in any election before he became president. He was also the second president to pass away while in office of gastroenteritis. Hi, my friends. If you enjoyed the content of my channel and you're interested in collecting and stacking silver coins, you may want to check out my playlists on my Legacy Stacker channel. You can go to my Legacy Stacker homepage by clicking on the Legacy Stacker gold coin right here. Then at the homepage, you can click on the Playlists tab right here. As you can see, I've created over 15 playlists on my channel, so you can check out everything from my Morgan Silver Dollar collection, my constitutional playlist, or even my most recent or most popular videos. Also, some interesting topics such as my Millionaire series, Dividend Stocks, or even the Fun Shows playlists. Also, 
Did you know you can subscribe to my channel just by clicking on this Legacy Stacker gold coin right here at the bottom right hand of the screen? How easy is that? So what I thought I would do for the history section of today's video is to share a few facts about the office of the president. Did you know that the Constitution provides certain stipulation as to who can become president? And in theory, anyone who meets these criteria can become president of the United States. Did you know that the president is considered the chief executive officer of the federal government? He's also the leader of our executive branch of government and is the commander in chief of the armed forces. There's also information about the presidential elections, including the presidential oath of office, qualifications, origins of the term president, President's Day, presidential politics, and finally, government administration. The obverse of the presidential dollar coins have the president's portrait, the president's name, dates of the term in office, and the number of the president's order in our history. The mintage year, mint mark, in God we trust, and E Pluribus Unum are uniquely incused on the edge of the coin. Although upside down, I did want to show you the reverse of these presidential dollars, as I believe the design is awesome. We have the Statue of Liberty there holding her torch and the $1 denomination, which I believe is one of the most beautiful $1 designs. This Dansko album with all of these what looks to me like brilliant uncirculated presidential dollars from the Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco mints is stunningly beautiful. I got the idea to purchase these Dansko albums last year when I went to visit the coin guy, and now that I've bought them, I just love them. If you'd like to see the video that I did on the coin guy's shop, I'll leave a link right up here to that video so you can check it out. If you would like to send me a letter, a sticker, or even silver or gold, my address is right here, and of course, in the description down below. Anything I receive, I will review on the channel, as these items will be my most precious possessions. And I can promise you anything I receive, I will never sell. They will remain in my Legacy Stacker Forever collection. The fourth page in the album contains the following presidents. Millard Fillmore was the son of a farmer who grew up in New York. He became a school teacher and later practiced law. He began his political career as a U.S. representative for New York and was nominated as vice president under Zachary Taylor. Upon President Taylor's passing away, Millard Fillmore was sworn in as president. Franklin Pierce was the son of a veteran from the Revolutionary War. He studied law and was elected as a U.S. representative for New Hampshire. He was the first president to deliver his inaugural speech from memory. He failed to purchase Cuba from Spain, but did obtain parts of Arizona and New Mexico from Mexico. He also signed the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854. James Buchanan was raised in Pennsylvania and graduated from Dickinson College. He studied law, fought in the War of 1812, and although he was engaged at one point, he never married due to her parents not approving of him. So one of the few presidents who was not married. He served as Secretary of State under President Polk, and during the Panic of 1857, seven states declared their independence as a new nation, and the Confederate States were created, which eventually led to the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln, also known as Honest Abe, was considered as one of the greatest presidents, and as you know, his portrait is on the Lincoln scent. He had very little formal education, but was very interested in the law and regularly walked to the library to read and study books. He was voted in as U.S. Senator of Illinois, and during his acceptance speech, famously said, quote, a house divided against itself cannot stand, end quote. He received the presidential nomination during the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Once he became president, he had to face the now 11 states that succeeded from the Union, the Confederate States of America. During the Civil War, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, which declared that all slaves were free. And he famously gave the Gettysburg Address, one of the most important and most commonly quoted presidential speeches in U.S. history. He was also the tallest president at 6 feet 4 inches, and he was the first president to be assassinated by John Wilkes Booth at Ford's Theater in 1865. And the fifth and final page in the album contains the following presidents. Andrew Johnson assumed the presidency after Lincoln's assassination and after the Civil War had ended. He also issued an amnesty proclamation which pardoned many Confederates in order to bring the United States back together after the Civil War. 
He never had a formal education. His wife helped him improve his reading and taught him writing and math. He was elected to the Tennessee House of Representatives, Senator and Governor. During his presidency, the 13th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified. He also purchased Alaska from Russia in 1867. Ulysses Simpson Grant was also known as the hero of Appomattox, as he was once fined $20, or the equivalent of $425 today, for speeding with a horse and carriage. He attended West Point, fought in the Mexican War, and volunteered to defend the Union, moving up the ranks until he became a general in the Union Army during the Civil War. He saved the stock market from collapse in 1869 and ensured voting rights with the Force Acts of 1870 and 1871. Rutherford Bichard Hayes was known as the Dark Horse President since he ended the Reconstruction period of the Civil War by withdrawing federal troops from South Carolina and Louisiana. He graduated from Harvard Law School. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives and he was also governor of Ohio. Railroad workers held the first national strike during his presidency, and Alexander Graham Bell installed the first telephone in the White House during his presidency. He also became the first president to visit the west coast of the United States. James Abram Garfield was ambidextrous and able to write with both hands, left and right simultaneously. He was also the last president to be born in a log cabin. He graduated from Williams College, was elected to the Ohio State Senate, rose through the ranks to Major General during the Civil War, and was also elected to Congress. During his presidency, he strengthened the federal authority over the New York Customs House, the main entryway for foreign goods into the U.S. Unfortunately, he was the second president to be assassinated when he was shot entering a railroad station in Washington, D.C. He passed away two months later of blood poisoning caused by repeated bullet wound probing with non-sterile instruments. On the back cover, it lists all of the presidents in order, their vice presidents, first lady, and each president's birthplace. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Presidential Dollars Dansko album, part one. I'll be back next week to review the Presidential Dollars Dansko album, volume two. Until then, my friends, stay safe out there and take care. And always remember, my friends, silver and gold, it's wealth you can hold in your hands.